I'm supposed to be working on wedding dresses right now, but I woke up today and saw the Barbie movie trailer and now I think I have to make a Barbie dress. There's just no other option. So I think we're going to take a brief pause on the wedding dress videos and we're going to be making a Barbie dress today. And so in the trailer, there were like two different versions of this dress. Um, and they're two different dresses, but they have the exact same bodice. So in my mind, I'm like, I really want to be able to make an interchangeable skirt to go with it so that I can be either of these dresses. So I don't know how I'm going to do the interchangeable skirts. I don't have the fabric for this dress, but I am determined to do this today. So I guess, I guess we're going shopping. All right, so my first stop today is going to be Hobby Lobby, even though I really try not to shop there. It is the closest fabric store or like craft store to me. So we're gonna stop there and plan B, if they don't have the fabric that I need, I think I'm just going to order a pair of sheets off of Amazon because I'm really impatient and want to start this right now. So fingers crossed that they're gonna have something. I am literally so happy I found the perfect fabric. Like, look at this, are you kidding me? So I got six yards of this, and then I also found these cute little buckles because she has like one that's pearls on the front of her dress. Um, this one's rhinestones, but it's still pretty close. So I got this, and now we can get home and go sewing. I'm so excited, and I think for the lining, I'm also, I bought some white rayon fabric that's supposed to come in today. It was for a different project, but I think we're gonna use that for the lining of it. And I got so much of this because I'm also gonna be making like the hat and everything too. So I'm so excited. Let's go get to work. So while I was washing my fabric, I decided to go ahead and figure out exactly how I was going to accomplish this dress. Um, and so what I decided to go with is a romper that is going to have two interchangeable skirts that go over top of it. Um, so making like an extra garment underneath it is going to be a lot more work, um, but I think it's just going to give like the most seamless and professional look. Um, and I'll get two cute skirts out of it, so it's pretty much like a three for one deal. You know, if that's how you have to look at it. But so here was the finished sketch. So it was the romper, the long skirt, the short skirt, and then also the hat. And so once it was all sketched out, it was time to cut out all the pieces. And I have very mixed feelings about working with gingham. I think it's a really cute fabric. And sometimes because it has these lines, it makes it a lot easier to sew. But I'm also somebody who really needs the lines to match up. So while I was cutting it, I was making sure that everything was lining up exactly how I wanted it to. And then here are the bodice pieces for the romper. And I cut one of each of these out of my gingham fabric and then one out of a lining fabric. And then here is the shorts for the romper. Again, these also have a lining. And then these pieces are just little strap pieces that I cut out. And I cut them on the bias of the fabric, which just means the diagonal. And that's going to give the fabric a little bit of stretch while we're wearing it. And then here is the first skirt pattern. Um, this is the long one. So we're going to cut two of these pieces on the fold and then here is the waistband to go along with it. And then this is the short skirt pattern. Um, and for these cute little scalloped edges, I just took something around in my house, which happened to be a spool of ribbon for me, um, and I traced along that little curved edge all the way across it and cut that out so that we will have this really cute and even pattern. Um, and this skirt is going to have a lining, which I decided to do out of the gingham, but you could also do it out of a different lining as well. Then here are just the little extra pieces to go along with this skirt. So I have the waistband and then the little pieces for the bow. And so those are the last big pattern pieces. The only other thing is I did cut out the sun hat pattern, but I will talk about that later. Now, once again, I am supposed to be sewing right now, but instead, what am I going to do? Something stupid with my hair, obviously. So uh, let's go cut it all off. <laughs> I'm so nervous. All right, well, I went to the appointment and I was given a bob, um, which was really cute, but not what I asked for. So I did this at 3 a.m. instead, and I kind of love it. 
<laughs> my hair's never been this short. I'm freaking out. <laughs> but serious mode now. I actually have to get to work on this dress. So I decided to work on the little jumpsuit first. Um, and we're going to start assembling the bodice. And the first thing I did is I sewed in all of the darts that I marked out for you guys on the pattern piece. Um, and so basically those little triangles that were marked out, um, we're just going to fold the edges of it together and sew across those lines. And at the very point of the triangle, it should just fade back into the fabric. So we're going to have four of those darts on all of the front bodice pieces and two of those darts on both of the back bodice pieces. And once again, I'm a big stickler for patterns, so I tried really hard to match up all of my lines so that they would be totally even, but that is a totally unnecessary step that I just like to do because I like to make my life harder, I guess. So once those darts are done, we're going to put the gingham bodices together, um, and I'm putting them pretty side to pretty side, and I'm going to be sewing across one side of the bodice. Um, and then I'm going to put the lining pieces together and I'm going to sew across the other side of the bodice. And so what we're doing with that is we're just going to be adding a zipper down one side of the bodice. And because when we're wearing the bodice, we want the wrong sides of the lining and the gingham together, we're going to have to put the seam on the mirrored sides. And it's also good to note that while I was sewing these pieces, I was also using a zigzag stitch to help with all of the fraying because once again, my serger is broken. Um, but next we're going to be moving on to adding the straps. Um, so for this, I'm just going to be folding these long pieces in half and sewing down that super long edge. And then I just took a small little stick and turned them right side out. And sorry the shot's blurry, but I was just cutting those two pieces into four pieces. And then we're going to take those four pieces and pin one of them into each of the little gingham top corners of this bodice. And once those are pinned in place, we're going to take our lining bodice and put these pieces pretty side to pretty side. And we're going to pin them together all across their top edges. And then we're just going to sew all across that seam. And then once you turn it right side out, this is how the bodice should be looking. So the straps will be attached and the top edge should be totally done. And so here's a little try on of how that should be looking. I was really happy with it so far. So then I moved on to the shorts of the bodice. Um, and these we're just going to put together like any other pair of shorts. So we're going to take a back piece and a front piece and put them pretty side to pretty side and sew them along that little small edge underneath the crotch seam and we're also going to sew them together down the side seams. And we're going to be doing this on all of the gingham and lining pieces. But again, because we do need to leave room for a zipper, down one side of the shorts, the same side that I did the other gingham bodice on, I left a six inch gap from the waist of the shorts and started from that point and just continued sewing down. And again, we're going to do the same thing on the lining pieces, but on the other side. So for my gingham ones, I chose the left side to leave open on all of my pieces so that on the lining side, I'm going to leave open the right side. And then I was just trying to sew and mind my own business and my lamp fully like came tumbling down on me for absolutely no reason. And I was stumped on how to get it back together. And I literally had to like look up the original Ikea instructions, but we were saved. Okay, she's fixed. And then we can put our shorts together finally. So I'm going to put these pieces pretty side to pretty side all across the crotch seam. Um, and we're going to sew that in place. Again, same thing on the lining pieces. So 
So after those are sewn, we can turn them right side out and voila, they are actually looking like pants now. And we're going to attach them to our bodice now. So I just pinned the two layers of the bodice together and then we're going to take the gingham layer of our shorts and put them pretty side to pretty side along the waist seam of the bodice. And then we're going to flip them to the other side and we're going to put the lining shorts pretty side to pretty side with the lining side of the bodice. So basically like the bodice is sandwiched between the two layers of the shorts that we just sewed and then we're going to sew them together all across the waist seam. So once you turn them right side out, the waist should be totally enclosed with a beautiful lining on the inside. And then that was pretty much it on these shorts. The only other thing I did was I added a zipper down that side that we had left open. Um, and then I just went ahead and hemmed them. And now we can move on to working on these skirts. So the first one I'm working on here is the short skirt. And so like I said, the lining for this skirt is also out of the gingham. So I'm taking two of my gingham layers and putting them pretty side to pretty side and sewing across their side seams, but again, leaving an eight inch gap down one of the sides for the zipper. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing on the lining gingham skirts, but again, putting that gap on the other side. And I was so proud of this pattern matching on that seam. I was, it's so satisfying to me, you guys. It's like a little game. It's addicting. Um, but after that, we're going to put these two skirts together, pretty side to pretty side. And all across their little scalloped edge, we're going to be pinning them together. And once they're all in place and lined up, we're just going to follow that seam all across the bottom. Then before we turn this piece right side out, we're actually going to be adding some little notches up into the corner of these scallops. Um, and this is going to help make that shape lay nice and flat when we turn it right side out. Um, and then as an extra little measure, I took some pinking shears and I just cut around all of these curves so that I would have these little triangles that will again help it like turn out and lay flat. Um, but you can always add some extra little notches around the curves if you don't have pinking shears. And then we're going to turn it right side out to reveal this cute little shape across the bottom. Um, and I'll be honest, it doesn't look that great before you iron it, but once it's all ironed, it looks so pretty. I've always wanted to do like one of these scalloped edges, but never got around to it. So I'm so happy I finally had an excuse to do one. Um, and then to finish up this skirt, I took the waistband piece that we cut out and I already adhered my interfacing to it with my iron and then folded it in half and folded the two little raw edges in so that when we pin it around the top of the waistband, we're not going to have any raw edges showing. And then we're just going to open it up and add the little raw edge of the waistband all the way around and pin it in place and stitch it down. And then the last big thing on this skirt was just again to add another invisible zipper down the side. And I've explained how to use invisible zippers a bunch of times on my channel, um, but I'll also link a step-by-step -step tutorial in the description of this video if you haven't used one before. Don't be intimidated, they're really not that hard. Um, and then the last little detail for this skirt is just going to be making a bow. So I took that little rectangle piece that we had cut out, folded the raw edges in towards the center, and stitched across the top and bottom. Turn that right side out, and if you kind of scrunch the middle, you'll see it start to take shape. Um, but we're going to take the little tail of this bow and stitch all across the perimeter except across the folded edge. And then we're going to just cut that piece in half and turn both ends of it right side out. And then I just kind of overlapped these pieces and added a basting stitch across the top to hold them together for now while I worked on the rest of the bow. 
Um, so again, we're going to just kind of like scrunch the center of that rectangle and take a piece of scrap fabric and put it around the center of it and stitch that in place. And then we're going to take those little tail ends and make these little pleats towards the center of it, pin it in place and stitch it to the back of the bow. And I just did that by like doing these little stitches in the center of it to kind of just hold it in place enough. And then the last little thing to do is just to hand stitch that onto the skirt itself. And that is the end of the short skirt. And now to make the long skirt, we're going to take these two humongous rectangles that we cut out and pin them together and sew them down both of their edges. Again, doing the same thing and leaving a little gap down one of them. This one, I think I did it at eight inches, um, but honestly, all of these numbers are just kind of around. Between like six and nine inches, you should be good. Um, and then we're just going to start from that point and sew it all the way to the bottom. And then across the top edge of the skirt, um, I'm just making these box pleats and it was really satisfying because again with the gingham fabric, it makes it pretty easy to figure out exactly like where these pleats should go. So I was just like taking one of these like light pink ones and folding it onto the next light pink one across from it and pinning that in place. Um, and so I think these ended up being about two inch big box pleats. And then I just put a basting stitch all across the top to hold that in place. And then again, I did the same thing with the waistband where I folded it in half and folded the little edges in. And then I'm just going to pin it to the top of this skirt. The only other difference is that once we get to the center of one of the skirt panels, um, we're going to stop pinning it and we're going to add on that little belt buckle charm that we got. Um, and we're going to slide it on and then I cut a little notch into the top edge of the skirt so that I can continue pinning the waistband around to the other side of this little charm. And it took a little bit of maneuvering to get it just right, but I think it ended up working pretty well in the end. Um, while stitching this one down though, I also did use um, a zipper foot just to get a little bit closer to that charm. But when I reached it, I stopped sewing and went around to the other side and then continued sewing. And then here I'm just taking out all of those basting stitches. And again, the last little things to do on this skirt are just to add another invisible zipper down the side, and then I also went ahead and hemmed the bottom edge of it. And there we have another finished skirt. Um, the only last thing to do now was to just make a little hat. Um, and I already have a full tutorial on how I make bucket hats and I use the exact same pattern. The only thing different is instead of the brim pattern that comes with the bucket hat, I just made one that was a full circle um, and it was a little bit of a thicker brim to give more of a sun hat look. But the assembly and everything was exactly the same as that full tutorial. Um, so I will also link that in the description of this video in case you are interested. But I seriously think I'm going to continue like wearing this sun hat outside of this because I think it turned out so freaking cute. But once we were done assembling all of these different components, it was finally time to put everything together. And I absolutely love how Barbie this turned out. Um, I did throw on a fun little blonde wig to get the full look that I wanted. Um, and I think it just really completes everything for me. Um, so as you can see, this is the full jumpsuit. And then this jumpsuit, because it is really fitted, it's super easy to slide different skirts on with it. So I think it does give the full illusion of a dress, which I really love. And so here is the long skirt design. Um, this one I did pair with a little petticoat that I got off of Amazon, and the petticoat was a little bit shorter than I wanted, but I still think it added a little bit more poof and got that like kind of 1950s look that Barbie had. But then you take that skirt off and you add the short skirt on top and you have her whole beach look. 
Um, and paired with the sun hat, it's chef's kiss. It's so stinking cute. I'm absolutely in love with this scalloped edge. I'm going to have to repeat it sometime soon. And putting all these pieces together, I did feel like a little Barbie doll. <laughs> I really hope you guys liked this video. I thought it was a fun little break for the halfway point of the wedding dress series. But don't worry because I am going to hop back on the wedding train in the next video. I promise. I promise I won't get sidetracked. But I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. If you guys decide to make this outfit, I hope that you also wear it to the Barbie movie premiere so that we can all be a squad. Um, <laughs> and yeah, have a good rest of your day. I will see you guys next time. Bye!